Let's talk about detail textures. Detail textures are a way that you can make your materials seem to have more detail than they originally had to begin with. In our case, we're going to put a detail texture in our normal map. The reasoning is, as we get really close to this, the normal map starts to look a little fuzzy. In fact, the texture itself is a little bit fuzzy, at least at this level of tiling, which we're going to take care of a little later. But here's how we add a detail texture. Let's open up the content browser, jump back into our material. Now, our detail texture, as I mentioned, is going to affect our normal map. Combining two normal maps together takes a little bit of know-how, but overall it's very easy. The first thing we need, though, is the other normal map we're going to be using. So I'm going to minimize the material editor. Over here inside the content browser, let's search through all assets. And in the search line, I want you to type in detail. And you're going to get a lot of detail normal maps. Now you can pick on any one of these you want. If you're following along, you can grab any one of these. It's just fine. But I'm going to grab THU Stone ND. And with that selected, let's go back over into the material editor. I'll hold down the T key and left click, and that'll create a texture sample. So we have two normal maps. How do we combine them together? Well, the actual bump information for a normal map exists within the red and the green channels. Blue is kind of like your baseline. That's like the actual bottom surface that's going to get perturbed by the red and green channels. So we don't really want to change the blue channel at all. We just want to combine in the red channel and the green channel. To do this, the first thing we need to do is take our second normal map, in this case the detail texture, and we're going to kind of switch off the blue channel. We're going to single out just red and green. We do that by right-clicking, going under Utility Nodes, and you'll see Component Mask. This allows you to literally mask out red, green, or blue components. And if we select it, you can see the properties. Would you like to see red, green, blue, or alpha? Notice that by default, red and green are active, but blue isn't. It's like they knew we were coming. I'm going to take the texture sample, plug that into the component mask. Now, we can't just combine these two together at this point. We need to essentially put a blue channel back into this texture, but the blue channel can't have any information. Now, what does a channel look like? What does a color look like when it has no information? The answer is black. It's supposed to look like black. So I'm going to right click again. Let's go back under utility. And we're going to grab append vector. This allows us to append a component back onto the end. So we'll have R and G. And by appending one more, we'll get B. But we need the information we're going to append. So what I'm going to do is create a constant. A constant is just a number. This is just a node that stores a single number, and the shortcut to create one is to hold down the one key and left click. If you select it, we can set its value to anything. We could set it to 50, but we're going to leave this at zero because, again, we want this information to be black. Plug this into input B on the append, plug the mask into input A, and now we're taking red and green and appending on zero for a value of blue. Now all we need to do is combine our normal maps. So what I'm going to do is grab an add node. You can create that by holding down, you guessed it, the A key for add, and then left click. And we're just going to plug our normal map into input A. Notice I'm using the RGB connector. And then for our append, we'll plug that into B. And the two are combined, so now let's just connect the result into our normal map. And now our bricks look really, really chunky. Now here's the catch. This texture sample, this detail texture, is very low resolution. It's because while its purpose is to make things appear more high resolution, appear to have more detail, to use it properly, you need more tiling. So back here behind our texture sample for our second normal map, I'm going to right click, go under coordinates, and let's grab a texture coordinate. This allows you to change the tiling of any texture and we'll just plug this right into the UV's input of our texture sample. Now I'm going to change our tiling. We have U tiling and V tiling. Let's set this to maybe 5 by 5. And now take a look at our bricks. They have all this great rich texture that you can get right up on top of and it just looks fantastic. 
And if you want, you can kind of make the the detail a little bit grainier. You might have even noticed a second ago, if we double up the tiling in one dimension, so maybe pull U tiling to, oh, I don't know. Let's leave it at five and we'll pull V tiling down to two. So now all of my detail kind of gets squashed in one dimension. So there's some vertical tiling, or we could run it horizontal, which might actually go better with bricks. Then get some streaking. You can really play with this tiling, get a variety of different effects. Now I'm going to leave this at 5x5. Five five. Let's go ahead and put all of this into a comment block. So I'm going to hold down Control and Alt and drag a marquee selection box around all of these nodes. Now these are called material expressions. That's our official name. You'll hear me use the term node a lot because technically that's what they are. They're little black boxes, each of which performs a very specific task, and you wire them all together. I'm just used to calling them nodes probably because I spent a long time working with Maya. Now let's drag these back a little bit, right click out here in empty space, choose new comment, and we'll label this normal and click OK. And it seems to include everything. We can move it around if we want to, just kind of get it nice and lined up. And there we go. Let's apply this. So I'm going to click the apply changes button. We'll close out of the material editor. In fact, we can go ahead and close out of the content browser. And there's our result. Now that detail is really severe. But for the purposes of our example, it's going to work. So now we have these really, really chunky bricks that almost appear to be flaking apart. Lots of rich texture there. But uh, go ahead and save your package, and then we will continue on in the next video.